Hello everyone and welcome back to Aspire to Be. Today we have Scott Matthew who works as a leadership coach for Team Try. Thank you, Scott, for coming on the show. What's up, leaders out there? Hey, Logan, I am honored to be a part of this. Super excited. Let's make it happen. Exactly. So what exactly does a leadership coach do? Yeah, so a leadership coach, at least in in the context of what I do, um, I work with students. And the leadership coach part is focusing on, you think of the term of a coach of encouraging and overseeing practice and helping with technique and skill set and all that kind of piece but in the context of leadership. So instead of like football coach, it's more focused on leadership. But I specifically work with students in that way um, and in some different ways that maybe we'll get into, but overall, simply put, helping a group of students become better leaders is what I do. That's awesome. So how did you get to become a leadership coach? Yeah, so early on in, as a student, I mean, as, as a student, I was in athletics in high school and stuff, and I went on to play football in college. But then in college, I also, my eyes were open to me up to all these different college uh, student leader organizations. And after I graduated, I actually immediately went back and started working full time as a, as an advisor for some of these student leader organizations. So that was kind of my first taste of, as an advisor, helping this new group of student leaders, like learn what they need to do and have training and stuff. But it, at the university that I was at, there was a lot of other aspects of my job that weren't just focused on being a leadership coach in that sense. And so I just had to stay patient and keep finding newer and newer opportunities um, to get more and more focused on just the leadership side. And so some of that I had to create myself, but then later on it was starting to pair with great organizations like CTSOs and, and Team Try. Um, so that we can do that even more focused and in even more impactful way. That's really cool. So what does a typical day look like for you as your job as uh, a leadership coach? Yeah, so when uh, when we're coaching, when I'm coaching a, a team, say for example, that would be like a state officer team for a career technical student organization like FBLA. Um, and what that would look like is every day just kind of checking in with the officers. As a coach, just like a basketball coach, you're not the one actually on the floor playing the game. You're just on the sideline kind of calling plays or like, hey, hey, watch out for that, watch out for that. And that's what we do for the state officer team, for example, is they are on the court. They're making the interactions with members, trying to support them and carrying out different initiatives. And I'm on the sideline of just like, hey, hey, watch out. Or like, hey, there's a typo there, you know, or like, hey, let's see if we can make that video a little bit better and, and those kind of pieces. And so day to day, some days there's a lot of that. Some days there's not very much of that, um, but there's a lot of support of the officers and in the things that they're doing. And then when there's events that those officers are in charge of or speaking at or anything, then there's a lot more of helping make sure they're, you know, looking good and sounding good and, and executing their role as that event to the best of their abilities. Nice. So you talked a little bit about being an advisor. What events from high school and then a higher education would you say pushed you into the field that you're in today? Yeah, so I I feel lucky that I had phenomenal coaches um, for basketball and football in high school. I, like they were some of my greatest mentors and I, I super impactful for me. So that idea of like, they helped me more than just be a good player. Like my basketball coach, I'll never forget how he said, like, if you want to be a good basketball player, it starts with being a good person. And he taught us a lot of leadership in that way. And so I got my first taste with that of like, man, like just helping more than just the job like in, in that way. And so that was this initial taste. And then in college, uh, there's so many student leader organizations that honestly, I didn't know about when I was in high school or like even think that that was going to be an option. Um, but I'm super grateful that I got involved into those because that's a super big focus as well. Of like learning, le- learning leadership and career prep. So whatever field you ended up going into, you could be better off for it because you have a student leader organization. And so I just had such a good experience with that that I wanted to turn around and give more students those opportunities. Um, and so that's kind of, yeah, what, what started it all at the beginning. Cool. Do you have any advice or thoughts for someone that would want to follow in your footsteps? Yeah, for sure. I, so one piece is to just make sure you're involved in some organization somewhere. And so it could be a CTSO like FBLA. I could be, you know, athletics and trying to pursue that. It could be a bunch of other organizations around. When you get into college, try to do the same thing. 
That same CTSO may or may not have a presence at the university. So maybe you help start it there or you get involved with other organizations, but get involved in some way. You have to find ways to learn the other education outside of the classroom to really enhance your experience. And so find organizations, whether that's student government or there's going to be like student alumni associations at universities or um, just anything. There's all sorts of student leader organizations. So get involved in that way. Um, but then in, when it comes to the coaching and the leadership training and the speaking and that kind of thing, first, it kind of just starts with getting involved with those leadership organizations, uh, just being present and contributing, contributing to meetings. Sometimes that naturally will help you grow into a leadership role within that club or organization. So then that means you're speaking, you're leading meetings and, and doing that kind of stuff. And so that's great. Um, but then other than that, there should be nothing to stop you from starting to produce and practice leadership content on your own. That could be on social media. Once a month, you do a little post about a leadership tip or tool or something. Um, it could be on your LinkedIn profile or a YouTube channel or anything like that. And it's totally okay if it's not, if it's a new account that you create because you don't really want anybody to see it yet, that's totally fine. But just get getting that practice, getting that reps. Because later on, if you come to me and you say, Hey Scott, I want to be a leadership trainer. I want to, I want to be a leadership coach. I'm like, cool. Show me what you've done. You know, like, have you ever, have you gotten any practice? I know that a new graduate doesn't already have six years of experience as a leadership coach, right? But there should be something that you've done to kind of model that a little bit. And that's what can make a big difference. So the faster you get started, knowing that it's going to be clunky, you're going to get started. It's not going to feel right. And you're going to watch the replay of yourself doing a training and you're going to hate it. I know I did. Uh, but you got to just get started in that way. So that would be some of the encouragement I would give. That's great advice. What would you tell yourself back in high school if you could only tell yourself one thing? Man, um, I would say, hmm, honestly, I would say that's a really good question. I would say keep going, honestly. Like, I, so I went to a tiny high school, didn't have very many CTSO opportunities and that kind of thing. It was more, it was just sports, at least that I knew it. And I was trying to really be involved and influence my teammates and be the best teammate that I could be and be the best leader I could be. And so even though, yes, that didn't like set me up for, you know, the bazillion scholarships at all the Ivy Leagues or whatever, but it definitely helped me get to where I am. And so I think I would just say keep going because I was doing all I could. Nice. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Do you have any more final thoughts? Man, the, the only, the last thing that I would just say to everybody out there trying to aspire to be more is that first, yes, you can. And second, I just want you to know you can do so much more than you think faster than you realize. You just got to get started. So get started in some way and you'll, you'll be well on your way to becoming whoever you aspire to. All right. Thank you once again for coming on the show. Bye. Thanks, man.